In this video, we will look at how to simplify expressions with roots. In some of our examples, you will notice the root or the index is an even number. And in some of the other examples, you will notice the root or the index is an odd number. And we will see how that affects our final answer. Let's begin with when our index n is an even number. So let's take our first radical expression. We have the square root of 36. Now, 36 is the radicand in this case, and 36 is greater than 0. So we will be looking at the first bullet in the property above. So if our radicand is greater than 0, it says that our radical expression is a real number. So let's take a look at our simplified answer. The square root of 36 is going to be the real number 6. And the reason is because since 6 squared is equal to 36, that means if we take the square root of 36, we should get the answer of 6. Another way to think about it is by rewriting the square root of 36 as the square root of 6 squared. When your index matches your exponent of your radicand, it's quite easy to simplify the radical expression. It just equals 6. So notice the index is a 2. Normally we don't write the 2 when it's the square root, but you have to know that the index is a 2 in this case, and that 2 matches the power of the radicand. So if the index matches the power of your radicand, then your answer will just be 6. Let's look at the next one. We do see a negative sign, but the negative sign is outside of the radical. So the 81 is the radicand, and 81 is greater than 0, which means we should also get a real number. So the negative or the opposite of the square root of 81 is going to be equal to negative 9. Now, you want to think of that negative sign as a negative 1 being multiplied by the square root of 81. Since the square root of 81 is 9, we will take negative 1 and multiply by 9 for a final answer of negative 9. Now let's look at what happens when our radicand is a negative number. So now our radicand is less than 0, which means we are going to follow the second bullet, which says that if a is less than 0, then our radical expression is not a real number. So if I have the square root of negative 25, I really can't simplify that. All I can do is say that it is not a real number. Now here's why. When you're taking the square root of something, you're trying to figure out what number was squared to produce that radicand. Well, if my radicand is negative 25, I'm trying to figure out what number did I square in order to generate negative 25. Well, there's no number that will do that. If I do 5 squared, I will get positive 25. Even if I put a negative 5 inside the parenthesis and square it, I will still get a positive 25. So there's no real number that I can square that will produce negative 25. There is no real number that we can square to arrive at negative 25. Now let's take a look at what happens. Whoops. First of all, let's summarize what we just did. In all three of these first examples, we had an index that was an even number. So our index n was 2 because we were doing the square root. We're finding the square root. So with an even index, when our radicand was negative 25, that means we had a negative radicand. Since it was an even index, we did not have an answer in the real number system. So that's why we had to say not a real number. Now let's take a look at what happens when our index is an odd number. So we're going to start looking at some cube roots. So the first one is the cube root of 64, and that is going to equal 4. And here's the reason. Since 4 cubed equals 64, we say that the cube root of 64 is 4. Let's also take a look at it if the index matches the power of the radicand. So instead of writing the cubed root of 64, we could write this as the cubed root of 4 cubed, since 4 cubed is equivalent to 64. And notice when your index matches your power on your radicand, the answer is just the base of 4. All right, let's take a look at the opposite of the cubed root of 8. This is going to equal negative 2. And the reason is because the negative on the outside is like a negative 1 being multiplied by the cubed root of 8. 
So this would be a negative one times two, which equals negative two. And I know that the cubed root of eight is two because two times two times two equals eight. So three factors of two equal eight. Let's look at the last one. Now I have the cubed root of negative 27. Well, when we had an even index, we saw that we were not able to find a real number answer for this. But now that we have an odd index, I can answer this and say it's negative three. Even though my radicand is less than zero, since my n, my index n is odd, I will get a real number answer. So since negative three cubed equals negative 27, it's okay for me to take the cubed root of a negative number. The cubed root of negative 27 equals negative three. Because if I take negative three times negative three times negative three, I will equal negative 27. So I'm not stumped looking for that number that I have to cube in order to get negative 27. I know it's negative three. But when it was an even index, up in, uh, a couple examples earlier, there was no number to square to equal negative 25. So these last three examples were examples of the index n, which was odd. In this case, we did cubed root, so our n was three. So now you can see the difference between when your index is an even number versus when your index is an odd number.